Hi everyone, I am MMS. Today I am going to discuss What to the Oyster Wind written by P.B. Sally. And today I am going to discuss from stanza number third. In this stanza, P.B. Sally describes West Wind's activities in the sea, in the water. Now, look at the text. Thou, who didst awaken from his summer's dream, the blue Mediterranean. Obviously, the Mediterranean has been personified as male figure. And the west wind of autumn rouses the Mediterranean Sea, which is supposed to be sleeping in the hot summer day. Where he lay, he meaning the sea, Mediterranean Sea, learned by the coil of his crystalline streams. The word lull indicates the domestic metaphor normally the small babies are made to sleep by the lulling sound lulling song in the same way it is supposed that the mediterranean sea mediterranean sea has been forced to sleep by the lulling song of the coil of his crystalline streams. Crystalline stream, stream meanings transparent water layer. Transparent water layer of the sea forces the sea to sleep. Okay. Beside a pumice isle in Bayas Bay, the Mediterranean Sea is supposed to sleep beside an island namely Pamis. Now the island is composed of the lavas or other materials coming from Vesuvius and this island is supposed to be by the Bayas Bay. Bayas Bay is in Mediterranean Sea. Here Sally uses a pointed local. Actually he means the whole sea but only to show his Hellenistic approach. Only to show his Hellenistic approach meaning using Greek references. The references from Greek mythology he uses the name of Bayas Bay and Pamis Isle. Actually, the entire sea is sleeping. And that sleep is disturbed or disrupted by the wake or by the advent of the ferocious west wind of water. And so in sleep, old palaces and towers quivering within the waves in tensor day. While sleeping, the Mediterranean Sea realizes the arrival of the west wind and while sleeping it sees old palaces and towers quivering. Now, this indicates that the Palaces and towers situating on the banks of the sea fall their shadows and the water trembles meaning water vibrates. Naturally the shadow of the towers and places, palaces seem to be trembling. That's why they are quivering. 
Actually, palaces and towers are not quivering. Their shadows falling on the water are quivering. And it, it seems that the palaces and towers are quivering. Within waves intensity. The phrase waves intensity means the hard times for the waves. Due to the arrival of the west wind, there is commotion, there is tough and rough commotion in the water. Naturally the waves which have been personified are supposed to be suffering from their bad times. They, are, they have fallen into the bad times due to the waste wind. All overgrown with azure moss and flowers. The submarine atmosphere is highlighted here. You know, the in a submarine underneath water, there are trees, leaves, flowers, etc. And the water layer is transparent. And the shadow of the sky you know, the shadow of the sky falls on the water and it influences the submarine forest. Naturally, the color that comes out is azure. That's why the moss and flowers are said to be azure. So sweet, the same friends picturing them. The line signalizes the supernaturalism, though Coleridge is supposed to be famous for his supernaturalism, but Keats, being a romantic poet, touches the romanticism. The line means if anybody, if anybody tries to conjure up the azure beauty, the submarine beauty, it's, he will be painted. The picture, the submarine beauty, the aquatic beauty, is so sweet. It is some kind of terrible beauty. It is some kind of destructive beauty. If anybody tries to conjure up that beauty, he will be fainted. Now, from whose path the Atlantic's level powers, level powers meaning water layer. Now west wind comes to Atlantic, comes to the Atlantic and shows its revolutionary activity, destructive activity, terror striking activity. Clip themselves into chasm. The water layer, the water layer clip themselves into castle. If, if West Wind passes through the water and the waves are created, now in between two waves there is chink, there is chasm and the plural sense should be noted here, the waves of Atlantic the waves of Atlantic are said to be in plural sense and they work as, as, as human beings. They clip themselves, they, they chink themselves. There is, there is chink in between one waves and another waves. While far below the sea blooms and uji woods, sea bloom and uji woods referred to submarine forest. The Uji woods meaning submarine forest, sea bloom also means the same thing, which were the sapless foliage of the ocean. You know, due to the adaptation, the submarine forest, submarine trees must be waterproof. 
that's why there's sponge like something so that they cannot soak water that's why sapless foliage foliage meaning leaves sapless meaning without any sap know thy voice the submarine view from forest the trees leaves everything natural phenomena aquatic natural phenomena know the West wind very well. Know thy voice and suddenly grow grey with fear. They are afraid. They are afraid of the arrival of the west wind. They are just trembling. They are just fearing the result. They are just fearing west wind. And tremble and despoil themselves. They start to tremble. They start to quiver in fear and despoil meaning spoil they commit suicide here or here it is the recurrent phrase it can be said as refrain it is because at the end of the successive stanzas stanza number one two and three the same phrase has been used I have already given the meaning here the internal celly and external west wind have merged. So naturally celly addresses the west wind emotionally. Hence over here emotional address. Let's come to the stanza number 4 of the or to the west wind written by Sally. In the stanza, Sally tries to compare the present west wind and its faculty with the boyhood Sally. The qualities which are possessed at present by west wind had been possessed by Sally during his boyhood. Now he is in pain, now he is in sore need, oxygen like need, oxygen like need. He, he appeals the ways to him for power and strength and energy. Look at the text. If I wear a dead leaf with thou mightest bear, if I wear subjunctive mood, at present, Sally can never be the dead leaf. It is his heartfelt wish, and it is in grammar nominated as subjunctive mood. Subjunctive mood. If I were a sweep cloud to fly with thee, in the first stanza we have seen the dead leaf. In the second stanza, we have seen the cloudlets, sweep cloud, a wave to pan beneath thy power. In the third stanza, we have the mention of wave. Now cloud, wave and leaf, I mean dead leaf, were under the super power of Mr. West Wind. Got it? Now Sally says, if I would be wall, meaning leaf, cloud and wave then he would be under the control of west wind and share the impulse of the strength I have already told you that west wind symbolizes strength energy power revolutionary spirit now what is revolution? To define revolution, I can say construction via destruction. Construction via destruction. Sally wants to share the impulse of the West Wind's strength and only less free than thou. Again, the sad comparison comes. 
Sailing is not as free as waste wind. I have already told you that waste wind is spiritual. Waste wind is divine. It is not under pressure of the jaundiced world. It is beyond problem. But sailing is with problem, problems. He is with so many problems. Physical problem, professional problem, social problem, economical problem, multidimensional problem. Only less free. Sally cannot be properly used by the waste stream because he has obligation. He has social obligation. He has physical hindrance. Oh, uncontrollable. It is very famous phrase, Sadie was uncontrollable during his boyhood and now at present he is not uncontrollable. At present, waste wind is uncontrollable. If even I were as in my boyhood, I have already told you that Sally in his boyhood was robust. He had physical hardihood. He had strength, he had prowess, he had everything. He had the power to regenerate the degenerated society or degenerated world. But at present, he has lost that caliber. He has lost that caliber. And could be the comrade of the wanderings over heaven. Suppose Sally would be in his boyhood and both Sally and Oestuin would be hovering in the sky. Sally would be comrade of Oestuin. If that would happen as then when to outstrip the sky state. Sally is confident that if I would be in boyhood Sally then I would defeat him. Then I would defeat him in the sky speed. I would be the champion. I would be the champion. Scarce in division. It is very significant, significant phrase. It would not be a vision, but it would be a reality. Meaning, it would be a reality. If Sally would be in boyhood Sally, boyhood status, then he would defeat the waste in, in every respect, in every aspect. I would never have striven as with us the in prayer in my sore need. If Sally would be boyhood Sally, then he would not beg to the waste in for power, for energy, for strength. At present Sally is in sore need, meaning Absolute necessity, meaning oxygen like necessity. Cell is begging, cell is praying to the West Wind to have the energy because he needs it badly. Oh, lift me as a wave, a leaf, a cloud, I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed. This is unparalleled lyricism. How can a man who is victim of this society, who is victim of his bad luck, victim of his adverse circumstances, express himself in such lyrical way, in such nursing way? Look at the words. Oh, leave me as a wave, a leaf, a cloud. I fall upon the thorns of life I bleed. No writer in the entire gamut of English literature have been successful in presenting his heart agony, heart's agony in such a lyrical way. He, he urges the West Wind to leave him because he has fallen into the thorns of life, I bleed. Thorns of life, you know, problems of life. So many problems are there in Sally's life. 
he is bleeding. He is like an injured soldier. He is bleeding and bleeding. Actually, he is bleeding internally. Celio was not satisfied with the ongoing situation of the universe. With the ongoing situation of the universe. That's why he said, I fall upon the thorns of life by bleed. I myself is being influenced. I myself suffer like Sally. We cannot but sympathize this bleeding soul. A heavy weight of ours has chained and bowed on to like the timeless, swift and proud. Sally says that heavy weight of ours. Yes, time has our weight. Time causes deadlock in your life. When you are disappointed in every way of your approaches, then you will feel that time has weight. Has changed and bought, meaning time has subdued Mr. Sally. Time has undone all the hopes and aspirations of Sally. Sally had potentialities. Sally had cal calibers. But everything has been deactivated by time. Time is very cruel to Mr. Sally. Want to like the tameless, swift and proud, these are the qualities of the present West Wind and these were the qualities of boyhood Sally. Now let's come to the final stanza, fifth stanza of the poem. Here Sally makes heartfelt appeal to the West Wind. He wants to be used by Sally, used to be used by West Wind. His intention is to regenerate the degenerated world. That's why he needs superpower. And that superpower is possessed by the West Wind. Sally is fascinated to the West Wind. Sally is selfish enough. Sally wants to be used by West Wind. He says, make me thy liar, even as the forest is. Liar, you know, one kind of musical instrument. The term, literary term, lyric has come from this word, liar. And Sally wants to be liar under the powerful hands of Mr. West Wind. Even as the forest is, at present forest is the liar to the West Wind. Because with the help of the forest, West Wind is creating music, making music. What if my leaves are falling like its own? This line is autobiographical enough. You know, my leaves are falling like its own. We have seen some trees during the autumn. The leaves of that trees fall down. Yeah. Here, Sally uses that metaphor, uses that image. It indicates Sally's conjunctive disease. Sally's health condition was deteriorating and it is compared to the falling of leaves. The tumult of thy mighty harmonies, you know mighty harmonies is oxymoronic phrase and the romantic writers normally use such type of phrases. Tumult of thy mighty harmonies, internally it is full of might but there must be harmony because no harmony, no creation. The harmony must be of high scale. The harmony must be of high scale. 
Yeah? The tumult of the mighty harmonies will take from both, both meaning forest and selling. Both meaning forest and selling. The deep autumnal tune, deep autumnal tone, sweet though in sadness. Autumnal tone will be out from Sally and the forest as well. But Sally's tone will be mixture of sadness and sweetness. Apparently superficially, the song will be, will be sweet, but the singer is in but the, but the poet is in sadness. In totality, the autumnal tone will be mixture of sweetness and sadness. Without spirit fears, my spirit. Here Sally seems to be on the driving seat. Here Sally seems to be on the driving seat. He asked the west wind to be his spirit. Without me, him, Peterson. Actually, both Sally and Oistuin wants to be one. Wants to be one. So that the energy will be much more intense. The, the prowess <coughs> will be much more noticeable. Try my dead thoughts over the universe. Drive my dead, dead thoughts over my dead meaning dormant. Thoughts are there in Sally's heart. But the situation, but the circumstances have made the thoughts dormant. They could not be activated. Now Sally asked the West Wind to help so that the, his dead thoughts may be scattered over the universe, may be scattered over the universe. Like with her leaves to quicken a new birth. We know her cell is somewhat deviating, that the withered leaves did not quicken to new birth, actually winged seeds in the first stanza we have seen. The winged seed quickened to new life. Still, Sally wants to drive, wants to scatter his thoughts, dead thoughts, in the way dead leaves and winged seeds are scattered. And he wants that his thoughts will be quickened to a new birth. And by the incantation of these words, again supernatural phrase, supernatural word, Sally believes in the supernatural power of poetry. He thinks that with the incantation of these words, meaning this word to the west wind, scatter as from an unextinguished heart, wonderful image. Unextinguished heart, you know, apparently it is without fire. But if you if you put your hand inside the heart, then will hand will be burnt. Meaning it is in, it is burning in, inside. It is burning inside. Sally compares himself to a heart to a to a heart, unextinguished heart. Ashes and sparks, ashes and sparks comes out of the unextinguished heart. In the same way, Sally, another heart, wants to discharge his dead thoughts, his words and ideas, which have been compared with ashes and sparks. My words among mankind. Sally wants that West Wind will help him to scatter his words among mankind. Be through my lips to honor an earth. Sally here wants to use the West Wind, his mouthpiece. His mouthpiece to unawaken earth. According to Sally, the earth is not awakening. 
it is almost dull earth, lifeless earth. It is as if sleeping. It is in as if in centuries slumber. That's why Selim wants to awaken the earth, the trumpet of your prophecy. Here Selim seems to be a prophet. The religious aspect of the poem comes out here. Selim wants to be a messiah. Trumpet of a prophecy. He wants to make West Wind the trumpet. And the trumpet will be announcing the prophetic odds of Selim to the unawakened mankind, to the unawakened earth. And the last line is very significant. It is charged with optimism. Oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? We know bad days do not linger. After the bad days, the good days will come, must come. Seli here seems to be optimistic. <coughs> he thinks that a degenerated condition of the universe will not last forever. After this degeneration, regeneration will be there. After the degeneration, regeneration will be there. After the problems, Happiness will be there. You know, winter is supposed to be a season of problems and spring is supposed to be the spring of season of happiness. So he thinks that after hard times, easy times will come. So, this is the end of the poem. Thank you. Thank you very much.